Hi, everybody. Good evening. This is Getting Familiar, and I am Lady Stars and Fire. Now, typically, here on the show, we discuss anything spiritually animal related. So we go over anything from our spirit guides to our power animals, familiars, different aspects of them. Are we learning our messages from them? Do we understand the messages we're getting from them? Are we getting them in dreams, meditation, shamanic journeys? Or are they coming in physical reality? And if so, do we notice it? Do we understand that they bring healing, not just power or just lessons? That there are different aspects to the animals? It can go on forever because many cultures have beliefs that include all the different animals spiritually. So when we mix all of that up, we truly start to realize we have been intertwined with the animals since the beginning of time. But for the last few shows, I have been going over the four elements and the four directions, along with some of their corresponding animals and how it is when we mix the elements, the directions with the animals, we start to have a much deeper, longer aspect as to what it is that they are bringing us. This way we carry that medicine, that healing, that power into our full life, not just to the healing or the guidance or the lesson being taught at that moment, but through our entire life. You see, it's a four thing. The four elements, the four directions. Idealistically, somehow, it is always four. Our four lifetimes, which is birth, youth, maturity, old age, and death. The four seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. The four moons, the waxing moon, the full moon, the whining moon, the new moon. The four times of day, dawn, afternoon, dusk, and night or midnight. We even have four physical orientations, the left, the right, in front, and in back. Many cultures see the four directions or the four elements in four different colors. But I'm not going to discuss those colors because depending on where it is you are or what culture it is, that you are, those colors may be different. You see, the four reminds us we are a creative force within the cycles, and that empowers us by being part of the four. So we are working with the creator spirit because we relive these patterns, these four, every 24 hours. It reminds us of eternal renewal. The elements and the directions themselves provide for us the full circle into human existence, human life, within its natural flow, teaching us of the ebb and flow of the seasons, year by year, season by season, day by day, and night by night. Now, I saved the north direction or earth element for last. Because even though I love it, I find it to be the hardest to understand. As it is a powerful force on inner treasures of wisdom, our empath, and our intuition. It brings us lessons of using, learning, and knowing our potential, our inner magic, and the understanding of magically manifesting direction to balance, to knowledge, to trust, to sacred wisdom, to the animal kingdom itself, and receiving of energy. The north direction, earth, it is also represented by the new moon, by winter, by midnight, and most importantly, death. It teaches us of the power of body, forms of it, such as rock, clay, sand, soil. It's our over-sensing realm, teaching us to pay attention to the sensations of our body, 
our biological needs, our physical health, our nutrition, our hygiene, our body language, our body's awareness, relaxation, and even rest. Some of these corresponding animals are obviously the animals from within the ground. Moles, worms, burrowing animals, but also the dog, the horse, the coyote, the deer, the wolf, the cow, ants, groupers, bull, bison, stag, grouper, and of course the bear. And I'm sure there's some other ones that I'm missing. But I want to start off today with the bear. Because the bear reminds us it's a time to go inward and explore the notion of our very existence. To dive deep, deep into your heart and find the significance of your very path. Reminding us it's our path, it's our journey. Roam freely and come to know you. Now, see, bear is very dear to me. The bear is one of the very reasons why I always talk about animal medicine, animal wisdom, spirit guides and power and everything. But most importantly to me, the very reason why I always tell people when an odd animal comes into your life, there is a reason, there is a lesson, there is a healing, a message, there's something there. Now, I have to remind people all the time, an odd animal means exactly that, an odd animal. If you live out near the woods and you see raccoons often, that is not an odd animal. It's something you see often. If you have a pet, your pet is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the odd animal that popped up out of nowhere that you never see. See, I'm going to share a story with you, and this is the reason why I push it when an odd animal comes into your life. Because a lot of us, like I was, was ignorant to the fact spirit is actually communicating with us and trying to help us. Look, I'm not about to pretend that I understand how the divine works, how the creator works, how our gods, our goddesses, whatever it is that you choose to see it as, works. I'm not going to pretend that I understand how synchronicity works. I just know it does. And in our physical reality, when an odd animal pops up, synchronicity, the divine, I don't know, but they're bringing you a message if you're smart enough to Google it and figure it out. Unless you're like I was and just dumbfounded and stupid to it. You see, because this story takes place before I actually started to find my path, to find my way. I didn't even know my path was starting. And like many of us, when our path is starting, it actually starts through destruction, which would be the north and the earth direction. It is said over and over again, and I know you've heard it, that before construction can start, Destruction must take place. And oh, how destruction was about to hit me. Because I was about to find out that everything that I knew was fact, solid, and concrete in my life was not. Relationships, my home, my business, as far as work went, all of it was about to take a 360 turn. And bear is what came to me with a message. But at that time, I was too ignorant to know I was receiving a message. But now in my life, as I look back, I completely understand that message. And this is why I tell everybody, you need to pay attention to the odd animals. So the story takes place out in the mountains. I'm on a vacation retreat with my loved ones. And ha ha ha, it starts off right with the signs. It's 4 a.m. Everybody's sleeping in the house. Oh, but I got an incoming phone call from my work with my employees at that time. They think that they are having some kind of crisis and have to call me and need help. So I take my phone and I go outside 
really, really, really early in the morning. Like I said, it's four o'clock in the morning so that I can take this phone call. I can find out what their problem is, see if I can help them. So I won't wake anyone up. So anyway, I've gone out the door and I'm having this conversation. Yes, I'm trying to be quiet. It is four o'clock in the morning, but we're talking, we're talking. I walked out the door, paying no real attention. I haven't gone too far from the house, but I have drifted off just a little bit while I'm talking. The conversation comes to an end and I'm smoking a cigarette. I hang up the phone, still smoking, and as I turn around, I notice right beside the house is where our barbecue is. That's also where the trash cans are. It's like the family's retreat place. Now, the night before, we had been barbecuing, but we cleaned up after ourselves. We didn't leave any food anywhere, but we had been barbecuing. So as I'm hanging up the phone and I'm turning back towards the house, I notice there is a black bear leaning on the trash cans. It almost looked to me like it was standing upright, just leaning on the trash cans. Now, obviously, the smell of the barbecuing from the night before is what brought it towards the house. But it's 4 a.m., I'm outside, the bear's outside, and everybody else is asleep. And the only way to get back in that house is through that door, which means I have to go towards the bear. My mind is realizing this. Sure, I am full of fear. I am thinking to myself, oh, nice big bear. Oh, pretty bear. Please, please, please don't eat me. And a super ton amount of Oh, crap. What am I going to do? Am I going to go back towards the house? Do I have the guts? Am I that stupid? We're in the mountains. There's nothing around me. Nothing. No neighbors. Nothing. Nothing but woods. Outside of the big fat yard I'm standing in as a great big target. Hello, bear. Look at me. Now, of course, all of this happened in like a minute. When what I did next, I would never, 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 never condole anybody ever doing what I did next. Because this bear is looking at me. Now, no, it's not running at me. It's not coming towards me at all. But it is looking at me. And the bear couldn't have been more than six feet away from me. So point blank. If it wanted to eat me, it could have, but something, something came over me and was just like, be fearless and go in the house. Just take one foot and start moving towards the house and go in. Now, I don't know what kind of cockamamie fool I am. I don't know where this courage come from. I have no idea what made me think that it was absolutely okay to walk towards that house. I don't know. Maybe I'm completely nuts. But I looked over at that bear and I said, nice bear. I put my cigarette out and I walked in that house. Now, you know, the second I got in that house, I freaked out. I locked the door. I ran over to the window to try to see if the bear was still around and what was going on. But I had managed to get in that house. And through the window, I watched the bear walk back up to the woods. That bear simply was watching me and assessing me, deciding what kind of character I had, and I guess if it was hungry enough. But that bear let me walk right past it. Now, again, I do not condole anybody ever being as stupid as I was. Do not ever take the chance with a wild animal, especially something like a bear, and think that you are going to make it through alive. They are wild for a reason. I don't know what kind of divine luck was with me that day, but apparently it was a message I was meant to receive. And apparently meant somehow to be delivered by that bear. So again, one of the messages when bear comes to you is, it is a time to go inward 
and explore the notion of your very existence. Dive deep into your heart and find the significance of the path or journey, whatever it may be, that is your life. Know you are able to roam freely, for it is your journey, your path, and your life. At that time, I was completely ignorant to receive that message, but I got it now. So anyway, some of the symbolic traits that go with bear is your unconscious mind, strength, grounding, Inner energy of soul for the very answers. Judgments. Are you being too critical? Or maybe you're not being critical enough. Your inner power. Peace and power. Nurturing and protection. Resurrection. Confidence and authority. Benevolence. Aggressiveness motherhood, as well as duality. You see, Bear invites us to embrace our power, our power of our spirit. It brings a mystical energy with supreme strength. It is fearless. It carries an aura of dominating authority. It truly teaches us raw power. You see, it is because the bear has many secrets to teach us, many symbols and medicine of extraordinary power. It is mysterious because we do find ourselves completely captivated and breathless by its presence, even from afar. But even I can say to happen upon one in the wilderness simply is not for the weak hearted for that very medicine we receive upon him in the woods shows us the depth of his power and reminds us the law of respect and boundaries. He humbles us in such a way through both fear and awe. You see, this is because the bear teaches us the law of boundaries, both of ourselves and of others. As the bear will make it known, if you are trespassing on his boundaries, it is you that will have to leave. As his only agenda is to maintain his boundaries and territory. For he reminds us, plain and simple, you would never entertain the very idea of crossing ancient boundaries, disrespecting the symbol or its power. However, though, through myth and lore, Bear is also known as a cave bear, a spirit animal of protection. In truth, there are too many bears to go over while I'm trying to discuss the direction of the north and the earth element, as we have the grizzly bear, the brown bear, the black bear, the koala bear. There are many, many bears. I don't have time to go over each and every one of them. But I'll do a show about that somewhere later in the future. I'm just hitting typical aspects of the bear without branching into individual bears right now. Because the bear is also a symbolic totem of deep, long sleep. Due to its hibernation, it invites us into the world of long, meditative journeying. So we are able to discover the true calling of our very heart and soul and he reminds us that he is a protector in this dream world in our very vision quests our journeying and meditations to call upon him to chase off the harmful energies such as nightmares as we are reminded by the mama fair effect that the mama bear does carry both the duality of feminine and masculine ferocious and nurturing. But on a typical day, the bear likes to spend most of its time alone. It enjoys nature. It enjoys the finding and hunting for berries and honey. That it is the simple delights 
that make life worthwhile. The simpleness within the journey that is so enjoyable. But it's that time right now, and we need to take a moment for our sponsors, and we'll be back to discuss a little bit more about bear, and then on to some other animals. So, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, this is Lady Stars and Fire. Come on over and visit me at Our Magical Sanctuary, where you can get the free healing messages each week, as well as picking up your own personal readings. I do ruin, I do tear it, I do combinations, and there's many to choose from. You can also get your astrology, where you can get your personology, and your solar returns. Shop around and see all of my personal handcrafted magical items or see the different spiritual information that is on the site. Come again and visit us at LadyStarsAndFire.com, our magical sanctuary with me, Lady Stars and Fire. Be good to you, love, and use you wisely. Hugs and kisses in the wind, everyone. Hearthside Handmade carries an array of unique handcrafted art, jewelry, and magical tools at reasonable prices. Most items are created using reclaimed or natural materials. Hearthside Handmade is also home to Cardea's Curios, an ever-changing selection of curiosities and magical ingredients responsibly wild harvested from the beautiful Silver Pines Farm in Georgia. Visit their website today at HeartsideHandmade.com. That's H-E-A-R-T-H-S-I-D-E-H-A-N-D-M-A-D-E dot C-O-M. Okay, everybody, we are back. This is Getting Familiar, and I am Lady Stars and Fire. If you're just tuning in and on tonight's show, we are discussing the north direction and the earth element and corresponding animals so that you can understand how to strengthen some of that power when maybe one of these animals come to you with power, medicine, guidance, or knowledge that they are trying to bring into your life because our very spirit guides and our power animals don't only come when we're journeying or when we're dreaming. They also come in physical reality. So it depends on how it is we receive them, what was going on in the message when we received them, as to what it is that they are teaching us, and are we capable of having the understanding of knowing when it is happening. So therefore, we can't actually receive the message. Before the break, we were talking about the bear. And I reminded everyone there are many, many bears out there. There's the polar bear, the koala bear, the grizzly bear, the brown bear, the black bear. So obviously I don't have time to go over each individual bear and what each bear possesses. But I'm going over the typical aspect of bears in general. Because to hit each individual bear, well, that would be an entire show. However, the bear brings us totem gifts of meditation and sweet delight. Symbolic traits for the spiritual medicine of the animal is strength and protection. For shamanic magic, it is dream time and vision quests. For in general, the bear brings us a insight into our unconscious mind, to our strength, to our grounding, to our inner energy, looking for soul, to give us the answers. Judgments. Are we too critical? Are we not critical enough? Our inner power. Peace and power. Nurturing and protection. Resurrection. Confidence and authority. Benevolence. Aggressiveness. Motherhood. Dualty of both masculine and feminine. Nature. Just as we took off for the break, we were discussing how the bear actually enjoys spending a lot of its time alone. How it is that it enjoys the simple pleasures of hunting, berries and honey, 
It reminds us to truly delight in the simple pleasures of life and that within that we find the sweetness of life to take time for the sweetness of life that within that the bear will travel to great lengths to recover the resources it needs at that time for the bear can sense the turning of the season for he not only is drawn but he knows when to seek the nourishment that he will find from the rivers the streams for the fish that he needs before hibernation he teaches us to provide ourselves with the nourishment that we know we need before it is too late and we cannot receive it for the bear knows when it is best to rest and retreat for he gathers the nutrients he needs to sustain him during his long hibernation period for also while he's in that hibernation period he has long vast amount of dream time travel so for us that means he reminds us to prepare ourselves mentally wholeheartedly to be comfortable enough to explore the universe through our dreams our meditation our vision quests but to come wholeheartedly and ready for the challenge to be prepared open-mindedly now in natural reality the bear is symbolic of the ruler he is the ruler of his domain and the bear reminds us of this by the simple fact of how big he is he still is able to slip up on you silently he can smell your fear and this is why they say lay down and play dead because typically the only way he's going to leave is for you to do so or choose to pass you by this is also why they say to come upon a bear in the wilderness is not for the weak of hearted for fear is a sense that the wild animals and especially the bear is going to know it's like they can taste it in the air but the bear is a great teacher and it is a great honor as well as responsibility to have the bear walking beside you as a symbolic totem as he teaches us humility through doing this he teaches us how to access our greatest of strength for he teaches us in order to get what you want you have to overcome your fears laying down your ego and allowing inner power to prevail for the bear the bear is all about heart and soul do you know what lies inside of you so next i want to talk about the bull as is your confidence so shall be your greatness bullheadedness sometimes good sometimes not so good as our bullheadedness can lead us in many directions bull helps us to understand when bullheadedness is needed and when we're really just being ignorant and using it for the wrong causes as the bull reminds us thinking abundantly brings us the ability to replicate and bring more of whatever it is the abundance we're bringing into our grasp as the bull reminds us by embracing abundance in all its many forms you can simply look around you and use what is already there and find what you can create more with the bull is known for its fertility for its abundance and for its strength the bull teaches us to bring the abundance that we want into our life also by showing us how we bring the abundance we don't want into our life and what i mean by that is typically when we want to bring ourselves abundance of something it's harder to bring us what we want because we don't stay as focused or as bull headed in the area of what it is we want we tend to stay more bull headed in the areas of what it is we don't want the bull does not move it stands its ground and there's nothing you can do about it the bull is a very wise animal of abundance so when we look at it from a negative point of view we can teach ourselves 
how to be positive by viewing what we did wrong. Where is it that we are bullheaded for the wrong reason? Are we embracing abundance in the wrong way? Okay, now let me explain. Bullheadedness reminds us of the law of attraction. This is abundance, darling. And the law of attraction is about what are you attracting? What are you abundantly bringing to you? Positive or negative? If you are bullheaded in a negative way, the abundance you're bringing to you is negative. Oh, woe is me. I can't manage to make this happen because this is in my way. Every time I get one step ahead, something happens that takes me three steps back. Now I have a new obstacle that is stopping me from achieving my goals again. Pointing fingers is a negative action. Pointing out how obstacles are always in the way, creating you from being able to move forward only brings more obstacles to keep you from moving forward. This is abundance. This is the law of attraction. This is bullheadedness in a negative way. And this is finding the very death of letting that go. This is how you change your thinking, the learning of how you should be thinking in order to bring abundance to you. Not abundance of a negative action, but of a positive. But often we have to be shown where we're screwing up in order to fix it. And this is exactly where the north direction and the earth element are coming into contact with the bull to teach us how to bring abundance to us correctly in our future. This is a hard lesson of change. But once we learn it, and we stick to it, the abundance comes quicker for what it is we do wish to abundantly bring to us. Bull medicine teaches us stability, strength, stamina, provision, confidence, fertility, helpfulness, and determination. You see, bull medicine grabs your attention. It asks you to gather your strength, not only your physical but your mental strength. The strength of the power from within you to create. This is willpower, as well as to keep you firmly grounded so that you can create the willpower needed. The bull teaches us to use your very own God-given strength and power to find it from within and harness it to use that strength, that power, to hold your very ground and then manifest the desires that you wish to have brought into your physical reality. In the Native American cultures, it is believed that the bull brings the rain to its tribe through its thundering hooves, that it is symbolic of abundance as the sounds of the hooves sound like an earthquake, giving off the sound of the dominion of earth, even with the earth quaking. And I bet that you didn't know one of the reasons that the bull is said for bringing fertility as well as abundance is because one bull, one bull, can impregnate the entire herd of its cows. And know that a herd can be anywhere from 10 to 50 cows. That is a bad mamma jamma. Anywhere from 10 to 50 cows it can impregnate. So for this very reason it is also said to bring fertility, not just abundance. This is also why in many cultures the bull is given or received as blessings to bless the union of the intimate relationship. In astrology, the bull is the symbol for Taurus. As in Latin, Taurus means bull. And the Taurus personality tends to be bull-like because the Taurus people tend to be incredibly powerful in both their physical and their spiritual presence. As a Taurus who has made up his mind, or her mind, 
is unmovable. For the Chinese, the symbolic presence of the bull or the ox is perseverance, determination, stability, and long-suffering. For in the light, the bull is symbolic of hard work, materialism, methodical progress, and rigid determination. But unlike Western astrology, the bull sign, the sign corresponds with the season of winter and the yen property of yin and yang. And in their ancient culture, it was symbolic of protection and guardianship, as it was shown in their art, guarding interwaves into temples, protecting the doorways, and believed to ward off thievery and other unwanted deeds or people. Now in Hebrew, the bull symbol represents man's ability to work with nature, as well as her creatures, to bring about abundance to the human tribes. To further the symbol of harmony and provision, this is only one suggestion from the Hebrew culture. And from the Celtic culture, the Celtic symbolism of the bull represents the strength and power and fertility for power to procreate, as well as to extend the life of the clan. It is said that the Druids associated the bull with solar energy and the female cow with earth energy. That it was also symbolic of great luxury, wealth, and provision by later Celts. But the Celtic bull also stands for strong will as well as an uncompromisable nature and even sometimes belligerence due to its unbending and stubborn personality traits, as this is where bullheaded comes from. But again, the bull also represents fertility for the self, as it is shown on beds, sheets, robes, pillows, to help enhance the mental state leading to sexual strength and endurance. The bull has tons of symbolisms throughout the world. I just don't have time to go over them all right now. So anyway, now since we're discussing the north direction and the element of earth, you can't have a show without talking about something from within the earth. So I choose worm. Has the worm crawled up to the surface to teach you a lesson? Could it be bringing you messages about your productivity? For me personally, when I say our spirit animals, I don't mean just animals, such as mammals, or fish, or insects. I mean anything that actually has a life that is not human, and is typically of an animal form. This is where I come into saying, often we don't think about such things as the little earthworm. It's just smaller. It's something we overlook. It's very easy to overlook it. But the earthworm is just as important as anything else to bring us medicine. And from being within the earth itself, what else is going to give you such great information of understanding some of the element of earth? Some of the actual earth's planet. Some of the medicine that she has to give us the lessons she has to give us. Why not go straight to something that lives directly within her? The worm has both female and male productive organs. So this is going to be about our yin-yang balance as well as fertility. Typically, they bring the question, are you helping the environment around you? Are you being productive in your life? Are you affirming in your thoughts and your actions? Some of the symbolic traits for the earthworm is measuring carefully, transformation, taking one step at a time, transmutation, camouflage, and concealment, logic and mathematics, and sensitivity. But it's that time of the hour again, so we need to take a moment for our sponsors, let them do their thing, 
and then we'll be right back to talk about the earthworm right after this. This is a message from Hawthorne at Magic in Your Living Room. The Etsy shop includes ritual programs and gorgeous altar cloths. We feature ready-to-use rituals for only $3 or less. You get step-by-step -step instructions including a list of necessary items, how to set up the altar, and a complete program for all ritual activity. We also have beautiful altar cloths for all holidays. Magic in Your Living Room is located at Etsy at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash magic in living room or at www.magicinyourlivingroom.com. The Raven's Rune is a spiritual resource center where you will find magical things for magical people. Handcrafted candles, incense, essential oil blends, and amazing hand-tooled custom leather goods. Check out their Wheel of the Year candle and incense packs. Each Sabbat has its own special blend, made during the correct moon phases by a practicing British traditional witch, to give your magic a boost. Using her knowledge and expertise, these products don't just smell good, they work. And you'll love the hand-tooled leather goods, book of shadows, journals, bracers, candle mats, and many other ritual tools. You'll revel in the magical feel of old world craftsmanship. They also offer unique psychic readings. Liz is a talented sensitive. Her insightful readings are unique and come from many years of experience of working in the psychic and paranormal fields. Her compassion and empathy with clients make her readings truly meaningful. Let a consultation with this talented clairvoyant help you through the difficulties in your life and find the path to achieving your goals. So, if you're looking for unique and genuine magical wares and tools, be sure to check them out on Facebook at The Raven's Rune, or visit the website where you can see all their wonderful offerings. The Raven's Rune, www.theravensrune.com. .ca. All right, everybody, and we are back. If you're just tuning in, this is Getting Familiar, and I am Lady Stars and Fire. Now for today's show, we have been going over the North Direction, the Earth Element, and some of those corresponding animals. How together that makes the spirit medicine the spirit guidance and power, a deeper meaning that we can carry through our entire life, through the cycles of our lives, not just the message or the learning at that very moment. For the deeper the aspects that we look into the animals, the deeper of those directions that they coincide with, as well as when we start to realize they also coincide with goddesses, gods, or your creator, as well as the sun, the moon, and other situations, so to speak. This helps to make that medicine you receive a much deeper meaning. It brings more broad information for us to learn from. It allows us to incorporate or adopt these situations, these learnings, this power, the medicine of the animal into our life as we journey through our life, through the four cycles that we are constantly reliving. Earlier, we had spoke about the bear, and we had spoken about the bull. But now, we're about to talk about the worm, the earthworm. For what better is there to learn about the actual earth element than to go inside of the earth and listen to the animal from within her? The earthworm has both male and female reproductive organs. So this reminds us of both the yin and the yang of our masculine and our feminine energy, as well as fertility, our very sensitivities in general. Again, other symbolic traits of the earthworm is measuring carefully, transformation, taking one step at a time, transmutation, camouflage, and concealment, 
logic, and also mathematics. The earthworm reminds us of our productivity. Often, its message is something in your life is not adding up. Take the time to figure out what needs to be measured properly. To measure the situation and its truths twice and then only cut once. And if you don't understand what that means, it's really simple. It means to take the time and carefully note what it is you are trying to create right now on your path. Simply to make sure the path is clear in front of you before moving ahead. As the earthworm is teaching us to be clear of what it is our purpose is before we start moving ahead. Verify that you know the transformation you are seeking is what it is you are seeking and that it's right for you. Just take it in smaller steps than to dive in because progress is good, sometimes at a much smaller pace. So let's stop for just a second. Let's think of the worm. Let's think and look at what the worm is. It has a long, slender body, but that's it. It's long, it's slender, and it's soft. It has no bones, it has no hard covering to protect itself, so it would seem that it would be closed off from the world, as it has no legs, no eyes, no ears, no nose. But what it does have is feeling. It feels its way. It is extremely sensitive, sensitive to vibrations, to the Earth's vibrations. So therefore, the earthworm speaks to us of our own feelings and our vibrations. It speaks to us of everything we are sensitive to in our life in general, not just our actual feelings, but our feeling body. Have you ever allowed yourself just to connect to the power beneath you, the power within the earth? Then, at that moment, you are being an earthworm because the earthworm itself actually reminds us as above, so below. As it reminds us, we, we are part of the correspondence between the earth and the sky. Just as it is part of the correspondence of coming out of the earth, so to the surface or below. We typically only notice the worms come up to the surface, though, when it rains. However, it still brings us the reminder, as above, so below. Just like for us, the earth, and the sky. I bet you actually did not know that the earthworm displays intelligence as they are choosing which leaves to use to cover their very tunnels into the earth and even without eyes the earthworms are able to sense light through their nerve cells in their skin let's look at it this way humans we don't see heat but we feel it similar concept you see the earthworm is teaching us to tune into the vibration of things in order to truly know them so therefore, he's teaching you, do you trust your feelings? Can you act upon them? As the earthworm does not have any eyes, nose, ears, legs, it has to move around by wiggling. It does this with two of its muscles. And it's quite simple, actually. What it does is it stretches out, and then it tightens up. It stretches out, and then it tightens up. And this is how it wiggles forward. You see, because the earthworm itself, when it's moving through the ground, it has two ways of how it moves through the ground. It either pushes the soil aside so it can move and create its tunnel, or simply if the earth is too hard, the soil is too hard and packed down that it cannot push it, it eats it. The earthworm actually swallows it. This gives the suggestion 
you can ask the earthworm to help you bring issues into light and through its teaching it may shape or reshape your world views typically the earthworms live in the top 18 inches closest to the surface however some will burrow down as low as eight and nine feet and if it runs into a stone while it's making its tunnel well it moves it because in truth the earthworm has the ability to move 50 times its weight and this is exactly why it is said the earthworm may reshape your once world views as it simply is reminding us there is more than one way to approach a problem or a situation there is more than one way to get through it it reminds us that the experiences that we are going through within our life shape our very character so often if a earthworm has lifted up to the surface and brought itself to you it may be telling you it's time to take personal inventory or more a life inventory examining and processing what has been experienced so far that it can clear and reset the stage for one's life and make dramatic new starts see we have to remember when the earthworm actually brings itself up to the surface it knows it is becoming vulnerable to predators so the earthworm itself reminds us not to just jump into something new without taking the proper caution but to actually think twice before we take actions as all of our actions have consequences this is taking responsibility for self because it simply reminds us all of the predators that is there ready and willing to eat it and devour it if given the chance yet only we can take responsibility for our actions whether we set ourselves up or not however it is also seen and taught in many cultures that the earthworm also teaches us how to regenerate because the simple earthworm has retained this ability as the earthworm can rebuild its part from what may have been pulled off by a bird or such regenerating itself now that is powerful medicine to incorporate into your own personal life how to regenerate oneself emotionally mentally physically spiritually regeneration can come in many forms for us an earthworm only teaches us how to do so through our own growth our own evolution you see the earthworms medicine is all about digging deep within ourselves and loosening things up the very exploring and transmutating of both our recent and our deep hidden buried past we fertilize our lives with a healthy dose of nutrients by which we revitalize our lives one of the main reasons earthworms come to the surface is for food and for mating now moving is helped with the earthworms through their hair bristles and slime and that slime has a pheromone when attracting earthworms that slime or that mucus allows them to breathe you see the earthworm itself has no lungs so it breathes through its body's surface the oxygen dissolves in the moist slime passing into the body and into the bloodstream but also that slime is also the substance that holds them together while they are mating as they exchange sperm lying side by side for hours their heads in opposite directions this alignment allows a tube to form picking up both eggs and sperm and then allowing it to turn into cocoons this is how the worms make baby worms so i find their reproduction interesting but anyway 
We're out of time today, so it's the end of our show. Thank you for hanging out with me this evening, and I hope you have a wonderful night. Again, this is Getting Familiar, and I am Lady Stars and Fire, and I'll be back with you next Thursday. From now to then, take care of you and use you wisely, darling. Hugs and kisses in the wind. Bye. Bless be, everybody.